so that uh so that we can uh get it right. You can you can hear me good, right? Check one two, one two. Yeah, totally. Yeah, we're good. All right, all we're right, good. all right, man. All right. So let me like move that out the way. My phone keeps slipping. I don't understand why it keeps slipping. All right, guys, what's going on? What's going on out there? I know you guys can hear me good. This is Lockout Men, and I'm back again. See, my phone keeps slipping. I don't understand. You know, I know why my phone keeps slipping. I just don't have it on this, uh, on this stand, and I need to put it on this stand, but it's okay for the moment. But what's going on, guys? I'm back with uh, another podcast for you this evening. This time, another another interview podcast. This uh, young man reached out to me via email, and he has a uh, he has a lot to say. So I decided to say, "Hey, let me go ahead and get this young man on right quick. <laughs> Let's get it going." What's up, guys? Lockout men in the truck on the thirty for this podcast for this evening. What's going on? If you guys like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell for more content like this. And, hey, look, do a brother a favor. Number one, hook me up with some coffee, damn it. All right? I ain't going to keep asking y'all to hook me up with some coffee. All right? And while you're at it, hit that like button. Or if you don't like it, Hit the dislike button, man, but I, I prefer the like button. But it shows that, it shows YouTube, even though YouTube is not going anywhere, but it just shows YouTube that you guys rocking with me. All right. This young man came in and uh, came in my email right quick. And he has a couple of topics that he want to go over with you guys right quick. I sent out uh, a reach out in my community post. He's seen it. He subscribed. Thank you very much, by the way. And uh, no and now he's here. Let's now before I butcher your last name, man. Before I butcher it, <laughs> Flugelman. You're close. Flugelman. 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 Yeah. Flugelman. It's German for. Fly man, which is awesome. Okay, okay. Let's welcome Jeff Flugelman to the show. What's going on, brother man? What's going on? Uh, well, man. Going in the right direction, for sure. All right. I'm I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that, man. For for my for my listeners, man, let them know who you are and where you come from. Right. So I'm Jeff Flugelman. I just finished up my CDL uh class um i passed my cdl certification with the state of ohio uh one and done that's what our school's motto was or at least a whole bunch of guys that we got around chained all the time very supportive um and so i just finished up i took a uh driving test at castellini it's a fruit-based uh hauling company out of uh wilder kentucky so I'm going to be uh, not commuting. My brother lives in Cincinnati, so I'm going to be crashing at his pad. And then uh, down the road, we'll sell my house up here and move move back down to uh, Cincinnati. Okay, okay, that's what's up, man. So you um, so you 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 already took the job. So let's talk about uh, let's talk about your time in training. So you decided to go. Sure. You 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 decided to go to a school versus going through a big trucking company why 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 you did that all right a couple different reasons um the horror stories of big trucking companies uh, i wanted to be a free agent so going into it i needed to save money i knew it was a a mild burden on the family to save the money but the long term is i got to choose where i wanted to go and i knew wherever i landed they'd be glad to have me and pay me back. And that's exactly what happened. Okay. So whether you decide to go one route or another, I just chose this route because it was best for me. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. Now you think, now you now you said that you you heard all of the horror stories from all these big trucking companies. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. and, and that was the reason why you went the route that you went. So 
as yep. far as finance go, how how was you able to finance your schooling? Well, so I saved up money basically for about a year. I did a job that I frankly just I was doing sales um, and I just couldn't do it. I I was good at it, but the moral aspect of it just was draining on me. Um, and I knew that if I kept doing it, I could get it out. And that's that was the mentality I was using um, to keep going at my everyday job. But, you know, my wife and I, she doesn't make a, a ton of money either, but we just, we saved up the, the four grand. Um, every penny we did, we did lots of non-eating out, lots of eating peanut butter and jelly to get the job done. And we That's did. I mean, it took to time. It. But... That's how you have to do it, man. You have to do and, it. And we, and we knew the next job would pay for it. It's just I wanted to choose that job. I didn't want to be stuck at a job. Okay, okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. So a lot of peanut butter and jelly. So, hey, guys, listen. Uh, That's what you guys got to do if you, if you got a dream like this man right here. You gotta you gotta stay focused on that dream, so you can't be out there partying and going to clubs and throwing dollars and all like that. You gotta save every last penny that you can get, so you can get to where you so you can get to where you at right now. That is what's up. So uh, how um so the driving the uh, truck driving school that you went to uh, was one. 60 driving school driving uh, yeah 160 driving academy out of columbus ohio okay Had phenomenal reviews on google there was a couple other schools here in town uh i interviewed them and i you know i'm an unconventional person so i i dive into whatever i'm doing so instead of like interviewing with the sales guy i wanted to go drive out to the yard and find out who's going to be teaching me um, the classroom, I already had my test on before I did my 40 hours. I already took my, uh, the, to get your temps. I took all those and got them, got them knocked out before my 40 hours. I didn't want to waste, uh, my 40 hours on learning rote memorization. So, uh, I did that a week before my school, but I went out and interviewed the guy that was going to be teaching me maneuvers. Do we click? Is it going to work? How's his teaching style? So I, I basically observed for half a day to see, hey, I'm going to be out here for three weeks. Am I going to get along with these guys? Okay, okay. And I love those guys. Yeah. How 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 long was the how long was the class? I'm on the website, by the way. If you guys stay in Ohio, yeah. this this look like uh, this look like they got uh like like schools all over, but the uh, one in Ohio, you said is in Columbus, because it looks Columbus, like it, said, Ohio, yeah. it looks like it says uh, Cincinnati, but uh, there is one in Cincinnati. But, oh, okay, you know, okay. So they got so they Columbus. got one in uh, let's see, they got they got a whole lot of them in Illinois because that's where they're based. Yeah, they out do, of. man. Yeah, but, uh, totally. Yeah, they got a uh, Wisconsin. Uh, yeah, there we go. Ohio. They got a uh, Michigan. Missouri, Ohio again. That's that's the one right there. How long was the uh, how long was the training? How, how long was it? Well, because I decided uh, to do it during Christmas time, um, we had an extra week that technically um, I didn't have to pay for because of the holidays and everything else. So I had a couple of days off, but it's uh, three weeks of the yard training and then one week of classwork. Yeah, that sound like that's so was, that sound like mine. That's that sound like what uh what I went through. Go ahead. Right. And so we had like a couple of shortened weeks, but they just put that on the backside. So normally I think theirs is uh two weeks of yard and then you take your test with a week of classroom. I think it's hundred and sixty hours that's where they get their name from. Okay, okay. Yeah, that sounds like what I uh what I had to go through because I went through driving school, uh I went through Tri C uh trucking academy, but they changed the name now, so it's Tri C Technical College some I, I don't know what it is, but you know, you guys can find the video because I did a video on them. Beautiful school out in uh out in Euclid, Ohio. Um I went during I went during the winter time, you know, I started uh I paid for it up in August, 
uh, classes begin in September, and then I finally got my license in December. So, um, what do you think? Let me ask you this right quick, since you you pretty much did the same thing. Do you feel that you uh, feel much more confident that you went to school during the winter time, or or wouldn't it, or you felt some kind of way because you didn't go to school during the summertime? No, no, no. I feel way better, and I'll tell you why. Um, one, I wanted to be with an instructor if it did snow here in Ohio. As and always. Two, <laughs> right. And two, let's say I, I kind of timed it out a little bit where I'm out of training at my regular job. Wherever I go, I'll be out of the training class and on my own in the springtime, which has its own challenges. But what I did want to do was get out on my own on my first winter with no real driving experience and have to deal with snow, ice, and sleet. I just, it wasn't, that didn't interest me. My whole goal is to be safe, and I'd rather have more mileage under my belt to deal with the winter ahead in 2020 winter uh, instead of going into it, uh, you know, this year. Because okay. now we only got another month or two uh, left. Okay. And I should be out of the training program. I should start warming up. Okay. Now this, that was my fault. Now this is now this is like all new for you. Plus, uh, you mentioned the fact that you was married. How how old are you? I'm forty years old. Forty 41. years old. Forty forty one. Yeah. I was I was forty five. Man, we 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 right up there, bro. <laughs> yeah, man. I was. We're, I was we're on the backside. Yeah, I was forty five <laughs> when I started. Um. Um, unfortunately, you know, I'm, I'm separated that, you know, that for me pretty much, you know, solidified the fact that made me, that pushed me to get into trucking because, you know, once me and my wife separated, I was like, look, right. I, I was like, look, I'm not going to stay home and, and just keep beating my head. I, I got to get out on the road, go somewhere, do something. Right. But, uh, you and your wife is still married. So how, how's your, uh, how, how did how did you come to talk to your wife about saying, Hey, I'm, I'm about to get, yeah, I'm, I'm about to be, be a trucker. I'm about to be a trucker. Yes. <laughs> right. So it's, it was an interesting uh, conversation. I'm a, a pretty straightforward guy. I just came home and said, this is my plan. I need to get out of sales. I'm sick of sales. You know, it's, I'm taking an antidepressant pill just to get through my day because it's just not, I'm not okay. And I need to do, I need to have a skill. And a couple of friends of mine said, Jeff, you used to fly airplanes. Why don't you go back to transportation? Slightly different. Um, and they're unique in its own way. And so I, I looked at it, called a couple of friends that own trucking companies. Um, they didn't really give me advice on schooling, but they just said, plan on being gone your first year. And then, if you can make it through the year with no accidents, no tickets, nothing, you'll be okay. So that's always been my mission. And so now going into my job interview, uh, when I was doing the interviewing, I didn't interview for the job. I interviewed the companies because they need drivers. Mm -hmm. It's uh, I got the upper hand, not them. Mm -hmm. So they need me. I don't need them. I need a right fit. So for me and my family, um, I wanted a regional based job that had that I wasn't over the road a ton. Um, but I could spend the night maybe one or two nights a week, but I'm home the other nights. There's some there's give and take though, right? Exactly. So with it with it being um, semi regional where I might be able to go on one night but then back it's third shift. But again, I talked to my wife about that, and it, maybe I'm just a new guy, but there's less cars on the road. So again, my goal is to get out of this thing with more experience and just no DOT problems, with no tickets, uh, no. So I needed a, a couple things, you know, that. And so this was a good fit for me, even though it's going to be a tough year. It's still a better fit than just going over the road. Man, man, Jeff, just sitting here listening to you, I am in, I, I am in awe of you right now, for real, because every, 
thing that you did with with, with the exception of going uh with the exception of going uh uh I'm assuming this is a local company uh, but uh you with the exception of you going regional I pretty much walked the same path <laughs> wow this is like deja vu man okay. I've basically walked the same path. Now, unfortunately, I went with a big mega uh, mega carrier. And at that time, you know, they came to the school and they was like, look, this is what we got. We can do this for you, yada, yada, yada. And I was all starstruck, stars in my eyes. I'm a truck driver, yada, yada, yada. And yeah, yeah. But uh, you, you took a step forward and and realize that these trucking companies which they they come in after us you took it a step forward and made them realize like look i don't need you you need me yeah 100 percent. you know yeah, what i'm saying you need but that's me. the case so that's yeah. the truth though for anyone with a cdl if they take that approach you just have to have the the pros and cons you have to go into understanding what that company is about like when I went in to interview, um, I knew the, the billionaire owner of Castellini Fruit. Mm-hmm. Um, I asked, is he around? Is he, you know, is this a union-based job? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there was questions I had, um, but there's give and take with any job. It's like with me not being over the road, okay, I'll work third shift, oh. or at least I'm home. Okay. How, how did you come across the company? I mean, where, where, did, you, where, where did you locate the company? Um... First, it was Indeed, and then I, from there, I always look at the, the company uh, driving records from the DOT. How, how much, how many trucks do they have getting pulled over, getting tickets? Is it driver related? Is it, is it, is the truck overweight? Any of that stuff. So I looked up all their stuff before I went in to interview because I don't want them to give me a crappy truck. And then me not having any recourse of going, hey, my blinker's out. I'm not taking the goddamn truck. So I wanted those kinds of things in order. So when I went to the interview, I had a list of questions. Like, hey, what about what happened here at this incident? How did this happen? And how can I avoid it? Because I don't want it to happen to me. Now let so, me let, let me let me hold you up right quick. You 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 just yeah. you you just keyword list of questions. When you went in there to talk to them or when you called them, did they mm-hmm. give you any type of attitude? Because, like I said, I do the make the call videos, and a lot of these recruiters, well, not a lot of them, but majority of them, they, they don't want to sit through a gang of questions that a driver has. What was your experience? Uh. What was your experience with now you interview with, with who you interview with the safety manager or the uh recruiter the recruiter what was yep. what was the experience with that when he when you came in there with the list of questions he was actually okay with it he uh told me he was okay with it because i told him when i first called him i said hey uh, do you want the questions in an email form or do you want them over the phone i said either way they have to get answered or i'm just not going to proceed um they're the ones looking for drivers and i told him up front i said i want to make sure i'm a good fit as much as you want to make sure i'm a good driver so there's some give and take there i think if people go into an interview maybe with a little bit more alpha dog and not a little you know what i mean i'm not saying i didn't go into a cocky because i definitely wanted the job but I I didn't I wouldn't want the job if they didn't answer the questions and they couldn't uh, help me, but they answered all the questions. Um, so he was totally fine with it. He actually was a recruiter for a big company and said he couldn't do the job anymore because uh, it just wasn't for him. Wow. So because this this is a, a bigger company, but it's not they're they're not a logistics company and there's a distinct difference they just want to get their fruit from one place to another wow so you know my look man look look at here my hats off to you bruh you did man look 
you 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 did you you did all the key points you you did your research you asked questions you fit you you figured out what this company was about and now you with this company and looks like you start in february 17th yeah february 17th my first day and i wanted a good training program i didn't want to just be plopped on the road because again my i would have loved to have taken a fueling job locally and just done nine to five and been home every night and just gotten 22 bucks an hour that'd been amazing the problem for me is i would get in an accident because i'm not that familiar right right so i needed something that hey there's some highway time that you know it's a 300 mile radius i can have as many three stops or i can have more stops but it wasn't so much local driving where i felt very uh not equipped to to do it safely where they're just going to have to get rid of me because I hit something or right. so as much as I w- would love to do that out of the gate I didn't feel my my skill set matched what they were looking for and another thing too you mentioned that uh you know bef- before we got on the air you mentioned that this company is in Kentucky so that's just right over the bridge so right um uh, you you won't even have to you you won't even have to do that much travel just travel right across the bridge hop in the hop in the truck do what you need to do come back yep. across the bridge and you good to go correct yep i'll be uh for the minute uh, my wife's gonna stay in columbus and i'm gonna live at my brother's house but again my wife and i talk about it it's it's better for me to be focused on the job to be safe and not have to worry about the the druthers of of uh you know making sure dinner's done and all the home right, stuff right, that goes right. along your, with your it. Wife, so if it wasn't wife for her yeah and, and she's got a job but you know um she understands that that this i'm taking this seriously and i'll see her on my times off and i'll communicate the best i can it's all new to me still so you know it's a learning curve for both of us but the goal is to get out of the year with no things on my record i want to be able to drive better um i want to feel comfortable in most environments so that's where i'm at that's that's, 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 that's why i chose this job that's what's up man uh, and i am uh, like i said i am i am still in awe of you man because everything everything that you did like I said, me with the exception, but that's I, I pretty I pretty much walked the same walk that you walked, man. I mean, it's it's crazy. It is crazy. Um, I see yeah. a lot of people not doing that. That's what is crazy to me. Um, yeah, it's a lot of job. Yeah, it's a lot of it's a lot of old school. Yeah, it's a lot of old school. Well, I don't consider myself old school yet. I'm you know I'm fifty, but. I don't consider myself old school yet, but people in their people in their you know late forties is is getting into trucking, and they they say that this is probably a good time for them to get into the industry, but I kind of wish to be honest with you, I kind of wish that I did get into it maybe about in the in the nineties, maybe you know. Um, in the early 2000s you know instead of me coming in in 2015 like i did i wish i would have got in it in the 90s and i probably could have could have better understood what what them guys back then went through because you know back then they didn't have gps they didn't have automatic trucks they didn't have uh we well we had cell phones but we we got like many computers in our pocket now you know what i'm saying and then back and then way back you know like in the late 80s where they didn't have nothing at all you know only only the only the atlas to get them from point a to b a bucket of quarters so they can pull over and call in their their dis talk to their dispatch and all like that everything now is tailor made it's tailor made for for the new jack driver you know what i'm saying automatic trucks yep. now we got we got we we got haters on both sides you know we got the old schoolers that's like oh man i don't want no automatic truck uh, you know and then we got some guys out there that's saying the same thing but you know it, it, it's unfortunate that they can't accept change 
it's it, it is what it is now automatic trucks are here <laughs> they're not going nowhere if if anything yeah. it's going to be more of them you know what i'm saying so you can call yep. you can call you can call new jack drivers what you want but as long as that truck goes into gear and gets me from point a to point b and gets me a paycheck on friday i'm good <laughs> yep. Yep. i am good i took my driving test for the company in a manual but i'll be right. driving an automatic right you didn't want it so. now that's what i was about to ask you too you you didn't you you didn't get restricted as a matter of fact you mentioned tankers so you got all your endorsements as well yeah i do um because i didn't know where where i was going to go that was the thing i wanted to have more options not less options exactly. so i wasn't sure where i was going to land and so you know that and that's still an option down the road but I want you know I, I I have no experience so uh, for me it's it was just let's get experience safely let me go through a really good training program where it's not two weeks long it's like six weeks I understand where some people uh, they can't go uh, and make less money but I would rather hedge on safety learning so I can do it longer that was just my mentality. So I wanted something that was a little bit longer okay. than two weeks, and I'm on my own. That's what's up, this man. Is... Now you mentioned since you said land on your feet. Let's uh, let's talk about what you uh, did in the past. You you said you got some retail. Sure. You got some retail experience up under your belt. But, yeah. Uh, I, you, I did that for sure. You, it says here you was a former uh, commercial pilot. Whoa. That's correct. How? What was your experience? on that i mean well, wow yeah so when i was uh younger i've always wanted to be an airline pilot that was my passion in life it still is um so i washed airplanes and hung out at the airport did everything i could just to ride in airplanes uh my parents weren't in aviation or any transportation industry they just worked at Procter and gamble which is a great job in cincinnati um but they weren't we weren't we didn't have tons of means or anything like that and they made us work okay. so um i figured I, I did high school uh hard labor and i saved up money um then so my parents matched whatever i saved and i went to flight school right out of high school and i was 19 and i was flight instructing um and then at 20, 21 ish, I got hired at Comair. They're since out of business, but I was doing that job. And then uh, God threw me a curveball and I got Crohn's disease. So I couldn't fly anymore. I lost my flight medical, which I'm sure people experience that uh, truck driving. Um, so I lost my medical. I couldn't fly anymore. I could have fought it if I wanted, but it would have been a, a career choice that wasn't advantageous. I would have been on disability, off disability, on disability, off disability. So it just wasn't, it wasn't a smart move to keep doing it. Oh, so, man. so oh. yeah, you lose your passion. You, you get thrown a curveball in life. And so, um, I ended up in the, uh, sports and supplement industry for 15 years and did that um, and uh, ended up selling all my stores and I got in just other sales types, selling roofs, selling insurance. I just couldn't find my niche. And I told my wife, I said, babe, I, I gotta do, I gotta, I'm talking to my friends. I gotta get back to like a, a, a career, not, you know, the run of the mill sales jobs that are out there for everyone that go nowhere and you're working your arse off. Um, right. And so that's how I ended up back back in the transportation industry. Well, you so. know, I got, I, I went and got, um, I went and got a clip of Catch Me If You Can. I'm not sure if you're mm. familiar with that mi movie with Leonardo oh, sure. DiCaprio. Yeah, totally. And uh, I yeah. got it on, I got it on the scene where he's, uh, you know, He's. It says uh, Frank's becoming a uh, becoming a pilot scene, 
And uh, it, I'm over here. I'm over here listening to you because you were saying that you was young, you know, and you wanted to get on the flights and all like that. And you know, yeah. that just made me pop this up. And I was like, yeah, I got to get that scene up right quick. I got to get that scene up, man. It's that's crazy. Wow. Some, some guys do it for the girls. That's for sure. I mean, that definitely was out there. Um, wearing a uniform, walking around, was certainly a confidence booster to a 20 year old kid. Um, so, so that's how. But, so, yeah. so, so, do you do you agree that the um, do you agree that the that the movie, you know, even though it was a movie, but you know, he's walking down the street. He got the he got the pilot. He oh got the, yeah. He got, he got the, yeah, he no, got the pilot suit on. <laughs> he got walking with a swag. I mean, look at the. I mean, I, he's walking with a swag, and I mean, and everything. Listen, I took that. I put that uniform on if I didn't have to go work. And this was back when malls were relevant, and just walking around the mall. So oh, yes, man, they yeah. work. Like I said, man, he's like I said, he's walking with swag and everything. So yeah, okay, yeah. okay. So a pilot. Yeah, no, so I, what? What was uh? Yeah. What, so was you uh? Like you? You was commercial pilot, so you flew like yeah, Boeing. Correct, yep. Yeah. So I got you know I was low man on the totem pole, so I got like Birmingham, Cincinnati, Orlando, Birmingham. Uh, commerce routes were regional, so that you didn't go long distances. You just went maybe hour, hour and a half flight, land, Chicago, Cincinnati, those kinds of routes. Um, and you got paid nothing because there's a million people that want to do that job. Was so you, I think my first year. Was you scared, though? I, no. not No. I'll be honest, man. This job is scarier, and there's just some differences, right? Right. So in this job. And driving a truck, you're worried about driving the truck, first and foremost, but more importantly, there's so many things that can happen to you that can come to you. A car cutting you off. Right. Uh, a car just, there's so many things that can just happen to you. So, uh, you know, so on, in the air, it's not like that. Everything is there to protect you. So you have radar. Uh, people guide you. Um, they tell you if stuff's getting close to you. So if you just take care of your business inside the cockpit, you're okay. You're not worried about people hitting you. If you're the only thing that you train that's different, right? The one thing in that when I was in uh, driving school, I asked them, "Hey, we don't really train for emergencies, right?" Well, in aviation, that's all you train for. You don't train for regular flights because the emergencies. Or what keep you safe? That's why you have the job. Okay. So if something happens, you're there to take care of it. Um, plus, do the regular flight, but that's not really what you're paid for. Um, and in our world, they don't really train you for emergencies. That's why I was very keen on my next level was, hey, I want longer training because I want the training side of things. How do you park in a when I went to interview, I asked dumb questions like, hey, is someone going to teach me how to park in a rest stop? Is someone going to teach me how to park at a gas station? Our school went through and I did it, but there's not a lot of time devoted to that kind of stuff. No, and, it's in not. our industry, right? No, it's not. The, That's the, the, the highest schools, accident potential. Right. The schools, Unfortunately, un unfortunately for like truck driving schools, they only going to just teach you just enough to get your your CDLs and nothing, nothing less, nothing more. Right. Just enough. Yeah, is is the trainer who you go out with is supposed to yeah. that's supposed to give you a little bit more edge on how to park <laughs> in, the, in the in the uh, truck stops and how to fuel teach you how the company wants you to drive their trucks but yeah it's it's gonna it's 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 tough because like i said they they don't teach you you know the schools don't teach you much and when you get out here i, I mean to be honest with you i hate to say it but when you get out here everything you learned in school throw it out the window raise down that left raise down that left window take your right hand your right hand and just throw it out the window because it's going to be a totally different ball game when you come out here, bro. 
Yeah, that's that's what my trainer said at school, or not at school, but when I was uh, driving for my Castellini job, that's what he said. Yeah. So oh, man. he said, as long as, you're, as long as you're coachable, man, he's like, I'd love to train you. Yeah. And, and we got along great, so – and listen, not you know, you say you like to ask dumb questions, man. No questions is yeah. ever dumb. You know, you if you feel, you know, this is a trucker saying out here. If a trucker thinks that he knows too much about trucking, it's time for him to get out of it. <laughs> right. It is time for him to get out of it. Well, yeah, it's cr it's crazy though. I mean, it's it's like man, most of the accidents uh, occur inside of a, a truck stop or or you know usually when a truck's parked, and, and you know so I'm like let's learn how to do that really well. So, you know, driving and, and navigating tight spots. You know, I don't want to just have to do it on my own. I want someone to teach me. That is what's up. All right, so what what was what other than um. What I want to say, uh, what were some things that you had to overcome before you, you know, before you stepped out on, uh, stepped out on faith and got into this truck driving? Um, basically the, the hardest hurdle for me, I guess, was, um, just the maneuvers. Once, once I got the straight back, everything else fell into place, but it was really, it's 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 not tough it's just you got to believe in yourself going into it so um you know um but once i had the backing down i i figured out you know all the 12 9 threes and all that that all works but you know you got to do something that works for you and individualize it for yourself without reinventing the wheel so like for me you know if i'm thinking about it i just use my hand which way do i want the truck to go and then i go the opposite way so I get it. I just use my hand and, and dramatize it. But that way I can only, you know, it, it's teaching me. But that's how I learned. And once I did that, then I overcame. And next thing you know, I'm doing the offset, the parallel, and 90, no problem. So, um, but other than that, I mean, it was really just about the safety side of things. And, and because it seems to me when I was looking at it from a – observer mm -hmm. from someone that's not a truck driver doesn't have a truck driving family that i could call mm -hmm. um it was about it seemed like what trucking companies will do is either turn and burn a guy mm -hmm. and just work him to death mm -hmm. and i didn't want that so i that was more of my hesitation are there local routes that you can get out of school because if you go on boards every person says nope not possible nope not possible but you have to fight over some of that. You got to get through some of that and, and make an opportunity. If, if you feel confident doing local driving jobs are out there, I just personally just wanted more of a safety net involved because I thought, you know, local, but I think it was more about the industry as a whole, uh, just saying, Hey, you got to go over the road. It's like what you do. It's, and you know, it took a bit just to find local jobs, people that come out of school and get those local jobs. You know, so there are local, was, there are local jobs available. You know, it was uh, it was it was one that uh, that I think I did a video on recently that he went out and actually, you know, he he uh, took down phone numbers of day cab jobs. You know, he he just rolled up on the side of the on the side of the truck. He seen the name of it. If it was a day cab, he just jot down the name and phone number. And he just comprised that, you know, comprised that list together. He called them up, found out that they was, you know, that they was locally. And instead of he instead of instead of calling them up, he actually went to the places to actually talk to him. And that's how he was able to get on with a local company. So that's the same thing, yeah, you know, smart. same, same yeah. route, same route that you took, you know, that's man, listen. They need drivers, man. That's what I know. It's just, you know, what's your safe, what's your, you know, comfort level. I, it just wasn't, I would love to drive for Pepsi and do local routes and do some drops or whatever and come home every night. That'd be awesome. I just, it, for me and my comfort level uh, and to have the longevity career that I, I'm looking for, it didn't seem like a smart fit for me. Wow. So 
I would rather get more experience under my belt before I'm, you know, doing some of those tight well, routes. Well, Jeff, you you wanna you 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 wanna you wanna mention the company that you work for? So yeah, it's the Castellini. Uh, I think it's Castellini Logistics. Let me see. But they see. the, the Castellini uh, Fruit Company. If you type that in Google, Castellini Fruit Company. Fruit company. Yep. Yep, they own a lot of fruit. Uh, and the owner, the owner of the company, um, comes in. He's a billionaire and still comes in to work uh, twice a week. Um, he's still very active um, in the company. They're a union. So I, I've never worked uh, really for a union before. So I talked to those guys oh my God. and learned, learned a little bit about it. So. Man, you just hit you 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 just hit the trifecta. I got I got the uh, website up on uh I got the website up. So it look like they just uh, fruits and vegetables. That's so you'll be driving mm -hmm. so you'll be driving a reefer trailer. Yep, that's correct. Yep. Okay, okay, man. Look, congratulations on all of the hard work, the total grind that you took before you got into the industry. It's a good thing that you, I, 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 like I said, my hat's off to you for taking, taking the time to do your research, and and finally getting with a company that you're that you're comfortable with, and hopefully that you're able to go a little bit far, far with this company. Would would they, um, being that you're a new jag, you of course you're going out with a with a trainer, but would they would they starting you off at you had uh you, so, you want to say yeah totally so. Yeah, totally. I don't. I don't mind at all. Um, so my, my first two weeks, it's a terrible fifteen dollars an hour. Um, that's local driving. That's all stuff that we're gonna do. We're not. It's eight to five. Okay. And then once I go on the road uh, with my when I'm actually doing the route driving, that goes to twenty two ninety five an hour. Which basically re translates out to about forty five thousand um, dollars per year over time. Uh, you know, he the the recruiter told me that you know most of the guys are making sixty five, but you can as long as you work your forty hours, you can stop there and just make your forty four. If you want to work more and earn more, that's fine. But they, you know, that's up to you. That's up to the driver. Uh, and I think I asked what the retention rate is and they say it's about 75%. They don't lose a lot of drivers. So if I like it and cause I've told them I'm probably going to bounce, I just want the experience. Thank you. I'll look for another job. Uh, he told, he laughed in my face and said, you'll probably end up staying here. And I said, well, we'll see. Yeah. You, you want to uh, end up staying there, especially if they like you and they treat you well, they, they definitely going to try and keep you. <laughs> yeah i i mean i hope it's a i hope it's everything that what my research has bared out i haven't talked to any other former drivers but all the research when i talk to drivers before my interview uh i asked the recruiter hey man can i talk to a couple of drivers while i'm down there he's like absolutely so he grabbed a couple of drivers um it could have been staged i don't know but it didn't it seemed very natural I asked those guys some questions about working in the union because I've never been part of that. And, you know, there's some, some bonuses and, and pluses there. But, but again, I mean, I'm getting paid while I'm sitting in a truck, but they're all pros and cons. These are things I weighed out and what's best for my family. So, you know, I, I'm excited going into this job. I'm excited that they're going to try and keep me safe um, so I can have a long career. I don't want to just be – six months and burn out and done that's not what i want did they so i want i want a job i can keep doing did they one uh, oh man this is so good did they now they is based in kentucky right correct yeah but that's across the street from cincinnati right right um yep. you told the you you told the dude you stayed in you know you stayed in columbus of course the, yep. They didn't have they and you and you doing you know local route driving. They didn't have no no problems of bringing you on to do that because you know some some carriers you know they like 
Oh, okay. Well, you live in Cleveland, Ohio. We we don't hire out of Cleveland. You know, this well, this company right here yeah, didn't so have I a did, problem with that. No, because I told him I was staying at my brother's house. So like, oh, okay, okay. And I'm gonna. I told him I was gonna relocate. Uh, we're gonna sell my house, but all that takes time. Oh, okay. And I also I also told him if I don't like the job, then I'm not selling my house. There you go. So let's just give this some time. Okay. Let's just see how this thing pans out. Man, that's what's up, man. Well, Jeff, man, look, oh. look, I, I, I just, I just want first thing first. Congratulations, bro. Uh, you're definitely your your CDL is your ticket. As long as you, as long as you keep your CDL clean, you're gonna always have a job, man. You're gonna always have a job. Now, be just don't fall into the perils of job jumping. You know what I'm saying? Try to stay with yep. this. Try to stay with this job. Get your year experience. Um, if you can stay a little bit longer, that's even better. But you know, once you get, once you build up your experience, then you're able to negotiate even, even better position of of going into this trucking game, man. All right, hey, what's all right? So I, I like to ask my uh, guest, you know, this last question before we get up out of here. But uh, what's more important to you, bro? Truth or happiness? Oh, happiness. Happiness. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, happiness, man. There you That's go. That's why I got in this industry. Happiness. There you go. Get off the anti-depression and just do a job you like to do and and not be under uh, massive sales quotas that I was under. So That's it's good to... It's good to finally get get that off my shoulders and that's what's up man. have a job have a job i like congratulations bro well jeff man thank you for coming on sharing your experience with us man i really yeah, do no, appreciate, I appreciate it, it. welcome to the lom community don't be no stranger bro you know like no, you, get, not, you know like six months down the line let me know let me know where you at six months down the line bro yeah, no, for sure, man. We'll stay. We'll stay in contact. I'll, I'll definitely do some uh, some uh, following, and I've already listened to a lot of your stuff, so I appreciate, I appreciate it. it, man. I, w I wouldn't have jumped on here if I, I didn't didn't listen and like you, man. So I appreciate, I, I appreciate what you. you're bringing to the community, man. Thank it's, you. Thank it's you. It's a tough one to get uh, good good solid information. Everyone wants big paydays and talk about big money. And it's like I, you know, you brought a lot of reason. And, logic to, to things. Thank you. So I Thank appreciate you. that. All right, Jeff, man. Well, I'll go ahead and talk to you a little bit later. You have a good night. Thank you for jumping on. I know it's a little bit late, no so problem. go ahead and get yourself some sleep. Well-deserved sleep. You know what I'm saying? Well-deserved sleep. Yeah. Uh, much love to you and your wife and much success to you and to the industry, man. Yeah, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. We'll stay in touch, man. Tenfold. Take it easy, bro. Awesome. Now, I just want to make sure that I say his name right. I should have got, damn it, man. <laughs> damn it, man. Uh, Jeff Frugelman, everybody. Jeff Frugelman. Yo, good conversation, man. From, from commercial pilot to truck driver, man. It's is so it's it's a good thing and this man right here whoo like i said it was it felt like deja vu again i mean he's in his 40s i was in my 40s when i got my license he did his now he did his extensive research me i did research but not extensive as he did you know what i'm saying so congratulations for him to get his uh cdls and much and and much success to this brother man so welcome to the welcome to the community and definitely stay safe look guys if you like content like this and more don't forget to like subscribe share comment and hit that bell for more content like this i am your humble host lockout men and this is lockout men podcast yo you this is on the daily the daily I, I just throw stuff out there on the daily you feel me i don't have no time maybe i should get one but i don't know but if you guys like it make sure you hit the like button tell youtube that you're rocking with lockout men let the world know 
that lockout men is here for you drivers man yo that's it i'm done you guys have a blessed night and i'll come back at you guys with another another video